wonderful Rosie and the charming Sebastian. Welcome. So I'll leave it up to you. Chris, so we're on now. Hi. So first of all, very warm welcome for our side to this uh, very interesting panel. Uh, we will hear in a few seconds why it's going to be so interesting. <laughs> but maybe you're wondering why we called this panel on Cloud9 with our partners. Well, it's pretty easy because we love our partners, right? In German, you say we are our Volke 7 with our partners. Here we are on Cloud9. And we are very excited about this uh, panel today. Rosie, maybe just a few words from you. Check, check. Yes, now it's working. Um, so, uh, hello. Uh, my name is Rosie. I'm the head of marketing of Plant Data Services. So that is actually the segment where Mindsphere had been created um, in the last couple of years. Sebastian? So, let's get right the oh, people on board. Okay. Jan, join us here on the stage. Jan is from Siemens. You will get to know them a little better in a second. We have Frank, and then we have Philip and Niels. Just join each other. That's Paolo. Fine. Jason and Paolo. Yeah. And of course, we have Jason. Yes. Okay. Well, cool. Have a seat. So thank you very much um, for joining this panel discussion. Actually, yesterday we had um, the same panel discussion in the Mindsphere launch, the same topic, but with different representatives of the partners. So. Again, welcome for, for this day's uh, panel discussion on MindSphere. Um, so generally speaking, for all of you who have not heard about MindSphere, just a short description. Um, it enables um, data collection and the creation of new service and business models. And overall, there are a couple of possibilities to contribute to the MindSphere ecosystem. Um, be it by, uh, via applications or connectivity elements or via infrastructure. And um, so yeah, I think before First we get question. started, I would like to ask our panelists to introduce themselves. And Jan, you may want to start. Yeah, my name is Jan Rosig. I'm with Siemens. And with the Siemens, I'm responsible for Digital Factory as a, <coughs> as a division. <laughs> and that's my role. There's some water for you. <coughs> <laughs> OK, Niels, you want to continue? Yeah, my name is Niels Hesberg, working for SAP. Um, I lead the go-to-market for IoT and Industry 4.0 for SAP. OK. Jason. Hi, everybody. I'm Jason Zander. I am the vice president in charge of Azure, our cloud worldwide, and the okay. engineering team. Thank you. And Frank, we go. Uh, Frank Riemensberg from Accenture. I look after our business here in the German speaking countries. OK. Philip. Philip Miltin. I am uh, head of the global market manufacturing, retail, and transport for Atos. And last but not least, it's Paolo. Hi, uh, how's everyone doing? My name is Paolo Venerino. I head up the technology partner segments across EMEA for Amazon Web Services. OK, great. So here's the first question. Jan, we said we're in love with our partners. And we really are, right? You can see this in our Mindsphere Lounge. And there is plenty of partners, not only the ones here on stage. And we have seen quite some good input from the partners to the ecosystem. Your opinion, why are partners so important to Mindsphere? Partners are the lifeblood of Mindsphere as an ecosystem. And I think what you need to be aware of is that times and paradigms are changing uh, in the digitalization and in the IT area. We are in a field where we need to partner and where partnership is uh, the greatest value that you can build up in an ecosystem. Mindsphere is designed to connect a whole lot of different devices of different nature of different connectivity, of different functionality, of different purpose. They all have one thing in common is they create data, and this data can be uploaded into the cloud, can be stored in the cloud, and there some sense needs to be made out of the data. The data needs to be analyzed, and it needs to be analyzed with know-how and knowledge, and there needs to be business decisions and business conclusions drawn out of the data in order to make business sense to them. And uh, with what I've said, you can conduct from that, that this is a very, very complex topic. There's a huge number of devices, a huge number of suppliers, a huge number of technologies involved, and they require people that actually work on this. What we want to provide with Mindsphere as Siemens is an operating system that can connect all of these devices and provides an interface for applications to be built on. And what we need and what Mindsphere needs is companies that provide the connectivity for the individual devices, that provide maybe parts of Mindsphere as an operating system. 
and that are prepared and uh, see it as their business model to add applications like on the iPhone onto the MindSphere in order to analyze the data and make them you know, um, meaningful for companies and businesses to draw conclusions from. And this is the value of the ecosystem around MindSphere that makes it so valuable to have all the parties joining forces in terms of enriching MindSphere as an ecosystem. Okay. okay. So, um, yeah, the most important information is that Mindsphere is an open IoT operating system. So that means um, not only Siemens will contribute to Mindsphere, but actually everyone who wants to join. Because, um, yeah, some people might know that, uh, oh, that might be a proprietary system. No, it's not. And that's why you gentlemen are sitting here on stage and um, telling us um, about the individual contributions to Mindsphere. So first question would be, I would start, Niels, with you. Um, wh why are you a partner um, of, of Siemens and, and of Mindsphere in specific? Yeah, so we've joined the, the journey of Mindsphere already um, you know, in 2013, end of 2013, in the evolution of the idea and uh, we are a technology provider to the MindSphere. Um, there's SAP elements that run within MindSphere, but I think that um, you know, the partnership between Siemens and SAP is much, much broader than that because at the end of the day, Siemens serves the same customers that we do. Our customers care about outcomes, about, and um, I think we are in a partnership to create better outcomes for our customers uh, all over the world. Okay. Okay, great. So, talking about technology, Jason, you're an infrastructure provider as well with your Azure platform. Why have you decided to partner up with MindSphere? Well, Microsoft has had a long history also of partnering, actually, with other companies that are here on the panel as well, and a long history of partnering with Siemens. Uh, we have a wide variety of products that we put forward, so, and we also find that we have a significant number of customers that are both customers of Siemens as well as Microsoft. Chances are people are already using Office 365, Windows, other environments they've used historically. Uh, so we believe that that will help significantly. In the cloud sense, we've already brought that with a lot of our SaaS applications, Dynamics and other areas like that. But then on the platform side, you know, Azure running in 38 regions worldwide is, you know, the most broad application platform for that to run. And so we really want to make sure that we can bring innovation like MindSphere and that integration to all of those customers together. And we see a lot of unique technology, since you asked about tech, uh, in future areas too. Artificial intelligence, HoloLens, if you've been up to the booth, either here or in the Microsoft, we both have joint booths together. Uh, being able to see HoloLens, seeing product innovation, operational scenarios and things like that. So we think there's a lot of really great synergies between the companies. Okay, okay. great. So, Paolo, you're the yes. next one. Um, so you're from Amazon Web Services. So why did you choose MindSphere's part? Well, yeah, for us, it's really a no-brainer. I mean, Siemens is an industrial giant, right? Uh, probably going through the largest transformation in its, in its history as it moves from a, you know, a, a maker of uh, uh, products into a digital company as line out in Siemens' uh, Vision 2020 plan. At the same time, Siemens excels on the, you know, the life cycle of, uh, of, uh, uh, of the factory plant, right? Everything that goes from you know, uh, the product design to execution, everything between product, uh, production and engineering. Um, so when Siemens, when Siemens says it's going to build the operating system for uh, in manufacturing IoT, well, why wouldn't we want to be a partner, right? It's the right thing, for, it's the right thing to do for, for the partnership. And also because we have, you know, in, in our DNA, we have an overarching um, aspect of it, which is about being customer obsessed. Uh, it's always about starting with the customer and working backwards. Um, so do, getting a ride with Siemens is getting a ride for, for, for our customers at the same, at the same time. Uh, you know, the IoT play is really just an operational data play. So whoever owns the physical assets at the factory line is really in, in a unique position to capture lion's share of the opportunity. And we want to be part of that journey. Okay, great. So we somehow covered the infrastructure part. Now also applications are very important to such an ecosystem. And Philip, you're from Atos. So you were actually one of the first partners uh, of the MindSphere ecosystem. Um, share your opinion. Why is it so important to you to be a partner of the ecosystem? Well, Siemens is our uh, number one strategic partner. And uh, we have a long uh, term relationship now since uh, five years. Uh, we have joint investment uh, in terms of innovation and uh, innovation in terms of uh, data analytics because uh, if we want to capture the data, we want uh, to just uh, become the data smarter. Uh, and so in the, in the data analytics, we have uh, developed a number of specific use cases for all the different uh, industries. 
And obviously, uh, with the Siemens, we are sharing the same vision to see between the OT world and the uh, IT environment how uh, it's important to combine the both worlds uh, and to develop specific applications, specific type of uh, integration and uh, capability to develop a new level of services, smart services for our common customer base. Okay. okay, so thank you. Um, so let's hear more about applications and services. Frank, um, today one of your co-workers in the Mindsphere Lounge during the presentation used also the term uh, total care 4.0 in regards to applications and service. So please let us know what is behind it. At Accenture, we look at the future of industry. And I tell you something, the platform economy is arriving in the manufacturing and industrial industry. What does that mean, actually, if you go forward? The competition will change. If you're manufacturing products today, tomorrow you will not compete on your product anymore. You will compete on products plus services plus new experience. What is a new experience? If you manufacture a truck, it's not about the best truck. It's about a truck which arrives on time, always fully loaded, never stuck, and has the best cargo. Now, if that is the future of the German industry, if that is the future of the industry in the world, you cannot compete anymore without being connected to a platform, without making use of a platform which allows you to service your own products while they're being operated somewhere in the world, which allows you to bundle data from different sources, basically to give your customers a new experience. That's what the future of the industry is about. That's why Siemens is building Mindsphere, and there's a huge opportunity, basically, for everybody to differentiate some superior services and new experiences around your own products. And by the way, there are billions of them out there, billions of things waiting to be connected. Thank you. OK, great. So now that we heard why the ecosystem of partners is so important and why you're participating in that, actually, I'm very much interested in how you're contributing to the ecosystem. So what are your solutions that you provide to the ecosystem and to our customer, uh, customers, of course? Niels, you want to go? Yes. So um, I think what we are providing is, uh, as I already said, a, a, a very big part of the technology that is embedded within um, in Mindsphere at this time. But in addition, um, SAP is providing and will provide even more um, solutions on top of Mindsphere, but also connections between Mindsphere and um, the business backend systems of CRM and so on. As I said, the journey is really from the thing to the outcome. And we have to bridge this whole IT, OT, bring those two together and enable those end-to-end -end processes without any break in the middle. That is, I think, the journey that we share, and this is why we are very uh, enthusiastic and proud in terms of what we are going to achieve here. Our customers are telling us we, want it, we don't want to be guessing and we don't want to be waiting. And this is exactly what Mindsphere SAP, the combination, does for our customers. Stop guessing and stop waiting for answers. Mm -hmm. OK, thank you. So. Um Philip, um, you were mentioning that Atos uh, has been a long partner, strategic partner um, of Siemens General. I would like to know how specific do you actually contribute to the Mindsphere? So, um, in light of uh, what I've been said, uh, we, we are providing an end-to-end solution because um, I believe that uh, the first element is to define the business case and uh, helping our customer to start, because I think the very important element is we have a long journey and the starting point is important. Developing specific application, uh, and I think you have uh, the capability here to see uh, on stage, uh, on, the, on the different booths, uh, all the different applications we have developed uh, specifically for food and beverage uh, capability, uh, on container uh, management. Uh, so the application is, uh, is key. Hosting the uh, application and the data is also a very important element. Uh, and the, the, the particularity of Atos, we, we are hosting that on public cloud and private uh, cloud as well. So that's uh, one of the uh, key capabilities of Atos. We are providing the cyber security because we are uh, in an open world and the cyber security component is a, a key element. And, uh, Atos has developed some specific technology around that. We have developed as well some 
connectivity uh, platform and uh, to, be, to enable third party to join the Mindsphere one because we believe that the end-to-end -end solution is critical. So we, we are providing the full set of solutions to allow our customer to start uh, and to enable this uh, absolutely critical journey. Okay, thanks, Philip. Jason, we heard of Azure, and this is basically maybe the start of the contribution of Microsoft to the Mindsphere ecosystem. What else can we expect? Yeah, I'd actually lay out three simple things. I'd say we start off with the infrastructure side, which is Azure, public cloud, and is a place to run, again, you know, regions around the world for reach, but also from a hybrid cloud perspective, private cloud being able to run Azure stack and appliances, so factory floors, wherever you're living for data sovereignty and issues like that. That's the hosting side. From an openness perspective for Mindsphere, I think also about the big contributions that we've made for OPC UA and some of the other automation things that you do from an OT side. How would I pull those together? And I actually echo the idea that we need to bridge IT and OT. 100% agree with that. Uh, obviously, we've had you know, multiple decades worth of enterprise experience. Uh, and with that, we come along with a lot of IT and being working there today. Uh, so being able to bridge those two things with our products as well, to open platforms, you want to make sure everything runs. Obviously, we want to make sure from a Microsoft perspective, we have a first class solution for integration there as well. So infrastructure up through SaaS and integration as well as on the operational side, we feel like we've got a lot to contribute to the Mindsphere open ecosystem. Okay. okay, so Paolo, um, you s uh, well, we learned that um, Amazon Web Services is contributing via infrastructure to Mindsphere. So I'm curious whether Alexa maybe one day uh, being take part in uh, industrial applications. Yeah, who knows? I mean, that's a, that's a, that's an interesting question. Um, so I think I think our contribution. I, I like to you know also summarize our contribution to to the Mindsphere and ecosystem. Uh, around uh, three, three main aspects, right? The first one is about experience, space innovation, and our global partner ecosystem. Um, you know, the I IoT brings, brings the promise of changing our lives, but at the end of the day, you know, the, the added efficiency or the, or the, or the added inconvenience e comes with a cost, right? You know, believing what the, some of the analysts say, uh, this is gonna generate an unsurmountable amount of, of data, uh, probably in a very zettabyte range, uh, and this is going to create an extreme tension uh, on, on inf internet, internet infrastructure, right? Um, and AWS has spent over a decade building the world's most reliable, secure, and scalable uh, uh, global infrastructure out there, right? Uh, don't take my word for it. Just, just read what the customers and analysts say. Um, and, you know, there's, there's really no compression algorithm for, the, for, this, for this experience. And we'll be doing it longer than anyone else in the, in the industry. All due respect for the competition has been doing a great job of uh, validating the industry for us. So, you know, we, we, bring, we, bring, we bring that experience. And the second aspect is we bring the pace of innovation, right? And going back to your uh, Alexa question, right? So, you know, our pace of, of innovation has been relentless. We have this Amazonian way of thinking, which is every day is day one for us, right? We don't have a day two. And every day is an opportunity to, to innovate, right? So, uh, you know, we, we've been, you know, been innovating at a, a very fast pace. Uh, just for some, just to give it an idea, in 2012 on, on, on AWS, we launched uh, 159 uh, functions and services. In 2013, we went up to 280, 500, 722 to the last year, 1017. So we've actually been increasing our pace of, of innovation in a relentless pace. So we've been innovating in favor, in benefit of our partners and our, and our customers so they, don't have, they can really focus on a value add and not on re reinventing the wheel. Um, what, we, what excites us about Alexa and, uh, and, uh, and the IoT world in particular is you know, there's multi-billion devices out there to connect to. Uh, and a lot, of, a lot of these devices work in intermittent type of environments, right? Where they not always have the benefit of being connected to the internet. So an example of where we innovated there is we introduced uh, green grass, which allows us to extend the AWS cloud to the device that's, 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 in, that's in the field. And we see a lot of uh, you know, manufacturers starting to work with us, collaborate with us in, in embedding green grass into, into the devices because that allows you to, uh, you know, to, to uh, enable the device in the field to have local computing powers, messaging, and, and data caching when they might not have it uh, from the onset. Uh, and at the same time, reduce the cost of uh, transferring data between the cloud and, and IoT. Um, so who knows if there's not a you know, synergy between the Alexa and, uh, and, uh, and the devices in the, in the, in the, in the factory plant. Um, last but not least, it's, it's about you know, our global partner ecosystem. We've also spent a decade building it up. Um, you know, we have tens of thousands of partners out there, be it large SIs, small SIs, uh, 
And what we, what's very interesting about it is the cross-pollination we're seeing across our different partner ecosystem, right? So we, we see them building on, on top of each other on the value um, and really contributing, you know, the value to the customer and, and, and the partner. So sorry for the long-winded answer, but I get very excited about, uh, about this question. I can talk for hours about it. We can continue that later on then in our lounge. Yep. So if you're more interested in Lexa, you find uh, <laughs> him upstairs. Jan, Mindsphere is the product of Siemens. And uh, I believe we have a lot of things that contribute to the ecosystem as well. So what are the things that we are bringing in there? Yeah, I think uh, there's two aspects that uh, Mindsphere brings to the table. The first one is it is a big and gigantic enabler. It is an operating system that allows devices to connect. And on the other side, it opens all the opportunities for uh, the partners, for the machine builders, for our customers, for Siemens as well, for other divisions within Siemens to write applications for the specific devices, for the infrastructure elements, and for maybe products in order to evaluate data, analyze them, and uh, use them for the improvement of products and production processes and for the improved operations of products as well. Secondly, it's a big crystallization point for an ecosystem to build and we have all of the representatives or a lot of the representatives of such an ecosystem around us. It's the ones that provide maybe additional connectivity to other devices. It's the ones that integrate Mindsphere in our customers' environment. Here you talked about a couple of aspects to integrate Mindsphere into the ERP systems of, uh, of our customers. It's uh, about the ones who add applications on the top of Mindsphere that could be the OEMs, that could be independent IT companies, that could be service providers that write applications, that could be our customers in the OEM field that have the expertise as far as their machines is concerned and that add their applications onto Mindsphere. There's not many companies in the world that can build a, an operating system like Mindsphere and we as Siemens, I think, are best suited in order to provide this enabler and crystallization point. And why is this the case? Because we have a huge number of devices and installed base out there in the field. We have 30 million automation devices out there in all kinds of factories around the world that can immediately be connected to Mindsphere as an operating system in order to deliver the data up into the cloud. We have 800,000 different kind of big devices like trains, like intelligent buildings, like, for example, scanners in our healthcare environment that can also be connected to the Mindsphere. And last but not least, there's 70 million smart meters connected to a Siemens um, energy IP that immediately can be connected to Mindsphere in order to get understanding about the consumption pattern in, el in the electricity space of end consumers and uh, that data can also be used in order to, for example, manage and run electricity grids. So that's the value add and the installed base that we have as Siemens in the field and that makes us an ideal player to build this crystallization and enabling point uh, for this kind of ecosystem that's about to form. And it's great to see all the participants here together on the panel uh, that make actually jointly uh, this environment work. Okay. So, yeah, as we can see when uh, hearing those figures, there's huge potential um, in connecting things um, to, to cloud systems and to Mindsphere in specific, of course. And so um, another figure I have for you, I mean, roughly 3.5% uh, of industrial assets worldwide are actually connected to the Internet of Things. So there's really massive potential um, for especially different business models and service models which could evolve out of that. Um, so. Next question would be, um, when seeing this potential, how do you actually um, see the, the, the future development of IoT markets in specific? So, Niels, maybe you want the first to answer that. Your question is, how do we see the future development of IoT? I think the, the, um, we think that there's still a, a huge potential going forward. We see a lot of our company, our customers, um, having started the journey but have not completed the journey. We, w we anticipate that this journey will have multiple steps, we, um, which then ultimately will drive to the vision. And Frank, I think you and I, we've worked a lot on the Industry 4.0 vision in manufacturing of business process automation and factory automation as um, you know, a, 
in many countries as a prerequisite for individual manufacturing. If we go into utilities, uh, you just mentioned energy IP. How do we actually enable all of that? Um, that is where the journey is. I think we are at the starting point of this journey, as you've outlined a huge opportunity. And, but it is going to be the key, on the one hand, to solve business problems, create value for customers, and I can, I'm repeating myself, it is how do we bring IT and OT, or OT and IT, it is a bi-directional, how do we bring that together? And as Jan has said, their mind sphere is just a huge opportunity to bring the left side of the brain and the right side of the brain together so that they can function the way we've always wanted them to function. We've been talking about this forever. But I think the time is there that now this is becoming an affordable reality for many. And that is where also companies like, like Siemens, with the investment that they are doing into Mindsphere, are helping a lot of small and medium-sized companies. IoT historically was perceived as something for the big guys. I see Mindsphere as a democratization of um, the p opportunity to do IoT on a worldwide basis and do that affordably. That is the core of what the Mindsphere offering is all about. Okay, so Frank, as you didn't get the chance to answer the last question, this one is for you. So how do you see the IoT developing? I mean, we have seen a number of applications in uh, our app store from, from Accenture, but is this all what you're going to put into the IoT? <coughs> it's all about solving problems for our customers, for our clients. Let me give you one example. One of our clients is a machine manufacturer for wood cutting machines for furniture production. Small machines, big machines, they have 10,000 out there. Their problem is they want to know when the machine breaks down. With Mindsphere, you can start to analyze that. And it's not about the knowledge that the machine breaks down. They want to have their own spare part there to repair the machine with their own spare part. That's revenue uptick. That's a problem solved. Next thing. They can monitor how the machine is used, their own machine. And they recognize maybe the machine is too small, though they can start the replenishment cycle earlier, selling a bigger machine because productivity goes up. Next thing, they can see if the operator uses the machine in the wrong way. So they can offer training for the machine operator to use the machine in the right way. Next thing, they can analyze if the supply chain of raw materials to the machine breaks down. There's a myriad of use cases. You only can start working on these use cases if you connect the machinery to the Mindsphere, if you start collecting the data, if you're adding data from different sources, and then you really understand the client's problems and how do you start solving this problem one by one. It can be done today. And I think, you know, that is how this thing will evolve and develop. And you can even go one step further if you want creating totally different business models to stay in your model. For example, a compressor you don't sell anymore to a customer, but you sell compressed air. Absolutely right, Jan. The as-a-service model will come with that. And to Amazon and Alexa, the next thing is new experiences. How about if you have a connection to the machine and the machine recognizes the performance of the operator and says, Frank, it's not your day this morning. We'll take uh -huh. it slow and it get you up to <laughs> yeah. speed. Go you home. You know, we are not <laughs> maybe are that. <laughs> but you know, this is basically the future of the platform economy, and that's the future of IoT. Without the base layer, without the connectivity, without the data, without the algorithms, without the artificial intelligence, you will not get there. That's a message. Okay. So, Jason, how do you estimate the future of IoT and digitalization? Well, I think these trends are, are also very good, and we have made massive investments in artificial intelligence. In fact, the recognizing operators, we've actually rolled that out with Uber, actually, to validate drivers and make sure they're there, and, and we have exactly that, uh, having shipped cognitive services for three years already. Uh, I think that artificial intelligence, deep learning, those sort of components are going to help significantly to crunch the data and find that new insight that's there. But I also think the new interfaces beyond just facial recognition recognition and things like that. I do think holographic is going to be very important, uh, being able to visualize what new things will look like, new factories, layout, and then also help with job training and uh, the kind of remote service technicians. We're already shipping scenarios today where as people go in to learn, we're going to be short about 2 million workers by 2025 in 
industry. How do we get them trained up? How do we help them work remotely? Things like HoloLens we think will help in that kind of environment as well. So we think that is going to be a big part of this. And I think, once again, being able to hook all these things together uh, and then really basing it finally on security and the scenarios that you have. Uh, we're building on two decades worth of experience also in the embedded space, having worked with controllers and partnered with Siemens actually for 20 years now, uh, in addition to things like being in existing data centers and being able to land at factory floor and things like that. Azure Stack is actually designed, put it in the corner of a factory because you can't afford your factory to go down. So we want to make sure that we have those kind of environments too. So big supporters of Industry 4.0, definitely want to see the AI, new user experiences have to come together, but rooted in that experience, security, making sure that we can keep everything up and running the way it needs to. And that's why we're excited about MindSphere as well, because it fits very well with what we think we're bringing together. OK, so it, it sounds to me that things <laughs> more and more merging. So is there the possibility that in a couple of years' time, we will have only one big IoT platform where everything is running on? And could this possibly be MindSphere, Philip? <laughs> I think so. I think that MindSphere will be the one. Uh, I, I think today, uh, in IoT, we are just scratching the surface. Uh, we, we are moving from a world where it's a descriptive environment to a prescriptive one. So uh, we were, at this stage, not able to track and trace everything we were uh, developing uh, on the shop floor. And with IoT, with MindSphere, uh, the capability to uh, develop some smart applications, some smart uh, elements will be key. Just to give you ex the, the example that uh, when you are um, developing a product, you have a t tolerance capability on the, on the quality of the product. <laughs> and uh, where you are developing an engine uh, at this stage is uh, 1,300 capability of tolerance for uh, one engine. When, when you are developing a car, it's 30,000 in terms of tolerance capability. Mm -hmm. And so at this stage, we have absolutely no capability to track and trace what exactly happened in terms of the quality of the product you are uh, developing for assembling the car. Tomorrow, with the MindSphere capability, with IoT, you will be able to track and trace and to get in real time capability to maintain, to optimize the quality of the car, to customize. And so you can uh, deploy this type of technology for a number of uh, elements, providing smart services. I totally agree with Jan that the uh, new type of services that uh, providing uh, product as a services with IoT will be absolutely a, a key element. Again, we are exactly in the same position that 20 years ago when internet uh, was starting. Uh, we are just uh, starting to implement uh, this technology, but where everything will be connected, the number of solutions and analytics uh, capability that we'll be able to deploy will promote a number of new solutions, new business, and new capability for customers. Okay, so great. Um, so, uh, Paolo, let's hear your thoughts, or I'd love to hear your thoughts on the future use cases, business yeah. models, and so on. Yeah, so, I mean, it's, 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 it's a very hard question to, to see where, you know, where we're going to end up with the IoT world, because there's, there's a race of a, you know, quite a few players uh, to try and capture the market share. There's a lot of vertical integration for acquisition or for organic growth to try and achieve those aims. If we put ourselves in the shoes of the customer, right, it's also very confusing for them because they're confronted with uh, sometimes partial technology stacks and, you know, crowded uh, vendor space, as I mentioned before. So I think, you know, I don't have a crystal ball. I don't, you know, I don't see the future, but I would say I would risk saying that uh, whoever, whoever has the platform playing can offer a comprehensive solution for, 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 for the customers end to end is really poised to, you know, to be very successful in this space. Uh, you know, AWS has, in our, in our view, in our humble view, we've created quite a robust set of IoT capabilities, uh, reflected in some of the you know, large IoT use cases we have there, as uh, you know, uh, Philips with the lighting platform, or Tata Motors with fleet management, Illumina with uh, gene sequencing, or uh, the Major League Baseball with the Stratcast uh, service. But we really think we just at the start of it, right? And, uh, and it's, this is why it's also very, very important for us as partnership with uh, MindSphere, because once more, going back to what I said at the beginning, whoever owns the physical assets where the data is flowing through in, in a factory line and from a manufacturing IoT perspective is really in a very good position to, to capitalize on opportunity. Okay. So, next question would be about 
the audience actually. So we've been talking about what we are doing and how the Mindsphere ecosystem is growing with our partners. What would be your advice to the audience? Maybe how to start, how to cope with the challenges. What are the things that you can give advice to our audience here to make things right? Frank, we start with you. It's very simple, you can start tomorrow. And it's basically people first. Go out to your shop floor, go out to your equipment, understand the needs of your customers, internally, externally, and then basically get a prototype up and running in a matter of weeks. It's not complicated. And that's how you start. And once you have access to data you didn't have before, you get ideas what you can do better tomorrow. Set yourself an ambitious target. If you're running a shop floor, three to 5% productivity improvement per year, it is possible. If you run a fleet of machines, bring the uninterrupted time down, increase your revenue with your own spare parts, within the year one, it's possible. You just have to start. Okay, so Jason, uh, what would be your message to the audience in specific and to the public in general? No, I do think that getting started, and, and one of the things we've tried to do is let's meet you where you are. Uh, because I think the last answer you want is I have everything up and running, and the good news is here's some cool tech, but you have to start from scratch. And so that's where I think the ecosystem that we've all worked out hard, I think is OPC UA, open source environments, being able to work and study the existing environments are there, is a great place to get up and get started, because I agree, there's cultural changes, there's technology changes to get going. The quicker you can get into that iterative mode to be able to start getting that, seeing what the next pieces look like, uh, is super important because once I get that going I can figure out what that path looks like and so again if you're able to get started and get it going and I think that's one of the nice things about the Mindsphere ecosystem being open the fact that you can actually start incorporating some of those elements into it means you can get started you can go try those first set of projects the first POCs uh, and get up and running from there and as much as we'd love and the artificial intelligence and other components those will be on the roadmap they're probably not going to be step one. And all the engagements we've done with IoT, it's a get the data in, get the alerting, get the flow, some of the demos you were showing before, get those scenarios up and running. When that data is in there, we'll be able to ingest it. And then we've got some really awesome examples of being able to apply uh, ML, jet engines, you know, elevators, service, getting better service uptimes, those sort of things. We've got awesome examples that can then come through and light up. But just that first step is super important. Okay. Niels, what would you do if we were the customer of Mindsphere? I think um, in different words, uh, buy the ticket, take the ride. Um, I think that you're, you're getting on a journey, but you have to start the journey, not tomorrow, start it today. Um, because it is going to be a journey. And um, this journey may actually provide some interesting surprises. That's why you should not procrastinate too much about the journey that you're going to take. Um, yeah, I have a customer um, in, um, you know, in, in um, the business of soap, towels, and dispensers. They went on the journey, and uh, they planned a huge amount. And then they went to the first customer who happened to be a hospital. And then when they actually went to the customer, they discovered that they had a compliance solution on their hand because they saw that the doctors were not washing their hands. That was not part of the specification at the beginning of what they thought that they were going to get. Therefore, do not procrastinate too much. By the way, do not think that you have a billion euro project ahead of you. Go in pieces, get on the journey, get on the, the train and start moving forward. There is no good reason for waiting because your competition is not waiting. And, um, and, but it is a journey, it is not a three month project um, implementing Industry 4.0 or IoT. It is a journey that is going to be with us, but you have to start to get to the end at some point in time. Mm -hmm. So Philip, with buzzwords like Industry 4.0 and I IoT and IoT being around, so what would be your statement uh, for, for people who are not already acquainted with, with digitalization overall? Um, I, I think that um, on, the, on the same trend that, that uh, the starting point is uh, absolutely key because uh, getting MindSphere uh, starting and uh, collecting data, uh, it's very easy. And you need to start to manipulate uh, data and uh, just to start the journey because uh, at one point 
you will discover a new type of application, you will uh, discover some capability before to get uh, integration. Uh, so that, that's absolutely key. You need to fail because, uh, as it was said, uh, it's a long journey uh, and you will not get access directly to the proper application, the proper solution, uh, and you absolutely need to play with that. So you need to start uh, on the different organization, different domain, uh, because uh, it's absolutely key that when you are looking the different application uh, that we are demonstrating here on the booth, uh, in the MindSphere launch and uh, on the different uh, organization, you see that we are just at the starting point. Uh, and so the IoT capability is just to start to play, just to get this ability to understand what you don't know today and what you will be able to develop as possible solution. The security is a key element as well, so don't be afraid. Don't be afraid that the, in the public cloud uh, with Azure, uh, there will be a number of capabilities, but as well, we are doing that on the, on the private cloud. So uh, don't be shy, just start, and you will discover a number of capabilities with MindSphere. OK, so Paula, I'm so sorry. This last question here sure. is not for you. This is actually for Alexa. So I'm going to ask her, Alexa, how <laughs> does the IoT future look like for you? Uh, so <laughs> you asked this question already. Or IoT well, but future. you can answer for her. She's okay. not around. OK. Um, so as, as, I, as, I, said, as I said before, I mean, the, the, IoT, the IoT is quite a fragmented space today, right? So I think that. You know, following up on the, the, the recommendation is, you know, I, I have two recommendations to, 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 to provide about the future. Uh, the first one is, you know, build, uh, you know, IoT projects are born like mushrooms inside most of the enterprise. So I really recommend build a small, a small agile team that can aggregate all these different requests and IoT opportunities and make sure that you build a reference uh, architecture. And then independently for your short-term or your long-term uh, objectives, make sure that you, you choose the cloud right? as, as the end platform where, you, where these projects land. Because on, on a short-term perspective, you need, to, you need to experiment often, right? Uh, you need to fail often, but you also need to fail at a low cost, right? Because otherwise you can't justify the, the, the next project. And also long-term, you know, the IoT project is going to generate a lot of data. So you, wanna, you, you want the scalability and you want the security and you want the, the low cost that, that this will provide you. Okay. So, Jan. The last, the last question. So what would be um, your wish for the audience or what is the key takeaway for the audience here? I think there's one common denominator that came across all the comments of uh, our ecosystem partners, which was get started now. And I'm deeply convinced that today it goes far beyond our imagination what is possible with an operating system like MindSphere and the ecosystem that uh, that actually forms around it. And uh, looking at uh, the possibilities and the way how we get beyond the imagination we have today, the start is very easy and it's actually a very small step to do that. It's just getting a small package. It doesn't cost almost anything. You get free access to Mindsphere for six weeks. You connect any machine within 20 minutes by just the click of a button. So that's very easy to do and the adventure starts. And you can start with just very, very simple kind of uh, applications displaying data from machines or displaying data from devices initially. And then you can now increase the complexity of applications as you go along and develop beyond imagination then over time. And let me just give you one thought out of our digital factory environment where it's all about building products manufacturing products, optimizing products. We have a digital twin of a product that you can see or a machine that you can see here on the booth quite frequently. We have a digital twin of production lines that you can see. So digital twin of a product, digital twin of a production line, and the MindSphere delivers the third digital twin, which is the performance digital twin. So the statistics of a product or a production in the real world. And if you combine the power of a digital product twin, the digital production twin, and the performance twin, it's all about combining these in the virtual and real world and then improving the, the uh, capabilities of products, the capabilities of production lines by combining all these data 
in an industrial world and environment in order to continuously improve products and production and therefore create efficiency in a, con con a continuous and endless loop. And that tells you and gives you some flavor about the opportunities and capabilities that such an ecosystem has. Okay, great. Thank you so much. You know what I really personally liked about this panel? We have such a diverse setup of companies here on the stage, and I guess it's somehow the first time that we all jointly be here on a presentation, and I'm pretty sure this was not the last time. So with this, we would like to thank you very much for your participation and for your participation here in this panel. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.